Hello, welcome to National Focus. I'm Kimani Serja. Coming up, Enterprise Development Center planned for Grand Bay, new multi-purpose room for Petit Savant Primary, and the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries is in the process of developing a national agricultural policy and action plan. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. A picture is worth a thousand words. Got it? Taking care of us can be so easy. Take good care of the children. Thanks for staying with us. Chairman of the Technical Vocational Education and Training Council, Edison Henry, wants TVET to be synonymous with success in Dominica. The chairman laments that for too long the acquisition of skills has been downplayed as an alternative to academics. On Thursday, GIS News spoke with Henry on the second day of a Tibet Industrial Linkage Forum held at the Fortune Hotel. Unfortunately, you know, Tibet has, has had a cultural um, deficiency in that we have seen it as a subject matter for those who are not so um academically inclined. We are seeking to change that culture because we see education and training working as a twin, equal partnership in person's um, development through life. And so education will provide the know why and training, which greatly encompasses TVET, will provide the know how. So over time, the, the, the know why and the know-how, you know, basically coincides to provide a, a, a well-rounded, fit-for-purpose um, employee. He notes that while those who have achieved academically do well financially, those who practice skills in many cases have done even better. He says the TVET Council is progressing smoothly to reach one of its aims, which is to certify skilled professionals with the Caribbean vocational qualifications. We are putting our systems in place to be able to afford to award the CVQ and, and that, that process will require certifiers, trainers, verifi verifiers, auditors and that sort of, of, of system. So we've also developed a set of um, a cadre of um, certifiers, trainers, assessors to also man that process. Um, we have two programs which are being now administered by the State College and we hope to use that to provide a catalyst for awarding our first nation, national um, vocational qualification. Um, we are also working closely with the Youth Development Division, the Call Center in Portsmouth and the Social Center to also award, to, to, to convert their programs to a national um, vocational qualification. The chairman gave an update on the Industrial Linkage Forum, which concluded today, Thursday. He says discussions have gone exceptionally well, and he looks forward to what is next for TVET. What is next is using all of this, this momentum, all of this information that we've gathered, to help build the, the relationship with industry and with the schools to, 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 to provide you know, employable TVET practitioners. And one thing about TVET to provide, you know, the, the spirit of entrepreneurship. You know, if, if you have someone and you teach them skills, then they can find work. Um, however, if, they're not, if they don't have employable skills, then it's difficult for them to even try something for themselves. So TVET also provides an opportunity to deal with our large youth unemployment pro, um, problem. And so going forward, we, we believe that we have sufficient momentum to basically, first of all, develop the systems. And once, it, once persons can access it, then that framework will be tested for improvement. Um, so we can be, you know, we can join our Caribbean neighbors in awarding the, the Caribbean vocational qualification. Meantime, the Honorable Minister for Employment, Ian Douglas, wants the Caribbean Vocational Qualification, or CVQ, to become a household name in Dominica. He sees having the CVQ as equally important as having a CXC qualification. The Employment Minister says also that the work of the National Employment Program complements the work of the Tibet Council in its quest to certify skilled professionals. What this CVQ does is it gives a certification for Caribbean people 
who are skilled in, in the vocations. And that is what we're really doing here. And that ties in nicely with what the Ministry of Trade and Employment is trying to do. We're trying to empower and equip our people to be skilled in the various vocations, in plumbing, in electricals, in mason, in carpentry, in woodwork, and for them to be able to receive a piece of paper, a certification that they can put in their back pocket. When they leave Dominica, they can go to Antigua, and when they apply for a job, they can attach their resume. I've worked in this hotel, I've worked here, I've worked X, I've worked Y, and I can attach my certificates. Just like the person living in FIFOM can attach his CX is a or the person living in college can attach his city and gales or, or can attach his, 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 his SAT, his SATs. So too, the persons who are trained in the vocations will be able to attach their CVQ, their certificates to show that they are qualified in their skills and in their vocations. In more news, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries is in the process of developing a national agricultural policy and action plan. Stakeholders within the public sector got the opportunity on Thursday to dialogue with consultant Eliud Williams to formulate the draft document. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Harold Gist, explained the importance of an agriculture policy. It will provide for us what I would consider guiding principles and a framework through which you will develop agriculture in, in Dominica. The policy will address some of the some of the uh, of the following rural employment and business competitiveness, poverty reduction and income generation for rural communities, empower, empowerment of rural communities rural infrastructure, how we treat with feeder roads, farm access roads, the new dispensation and how we build agricultural infrastructure, sheds and, and toilet facilities and all those things that are now being demanded for agriculture in these times. Irrigation systems, how to treat with environmental impacts of agrochemicals, these things are very important. We need some guiding principles. We need to have some, some, some things like a road map for agricultural development in Dominica. And I'm hoping that this policy will assist us to do that. GIS News will bring you more from Thursday's workshop in Friday's newscast. The Honorable Minister for Trade, Energy and Employment, Ian Douglas, says plans are underway for an enterprise development center in Grand Bay. At a recent interview with GIS News, the Employment Minister says under the National Employment Program, his ministry is seeking to assist self-employed persons of Dubic and Petit Savan whose livelihoods were disrupted by the passage of Tropical Storm Erica. Persons have lost their little shops and their little um, cottage industries, and we're hoping to use the uh, aid bank building in the Geneva estate to establish um, small enterprises and to train persons actually um, in the development of those enterprises. One, to create employment for the displaced and for the persons who run their little hairdressing, their little hair braiding. Um, all their little cottage industries from their homes in Dubic and in Petit Savan and the other areas. We want to put them in there so that they can continue their trade. That's some of the things that we're working on from that aspect of the ministry. The minister also informed that his ministry is continuing to expand the reach of the National Employment Programme. We're trying to, to expand the programme to go into other areas, especially the, the um, boat building, sector we're trying to do some stuff in that the abattoir is coming on stream soon so we're running some modules in um in pork production in poultry production where we're actually training young persons to run their own poultry and pork production around the country um, of course we have done some stuff in fishing fish pot making in boat building the National Employment Program has trained, employed and mentored several hundreds of Dominicans since its inception in 2013. The program continues to explore several components for building the country's human resource base, including on-the-job training, mentorship, graduate internship, education mentorship, adult education to work and marketing assistance. You're watching National Focus. More when we return.
Good day. Could I get a rum punch? I'll have a banana and a daiquiri, thanks. Make a song and dance about good service. It's the key to Dominica's success. Tourism is everybody's business. Let's play our part. Welcome back. The Ministry of Education, in collaboration with the Rotary Club and the Sandals Foundation, has worked feverishly to provide the Petit Savan Primary School with a multi-purpose resource room. The Sandals Foundation is the philanthropic arm of the Sandals Resort International, which assists the Caribbean through investment in sustainable projects in education. The Honorable Minister for Education, Peter Senja, expressed gratitude to the Sandals Foundation and the Rotary Club on behalf of the government of Dominica. The government and people of Dominica are indeed immensely grateful for your generous gesture. And we assure you that the facility is a welcome addition to the school. I can also assure you that because the students here at the Pitt Savan Primary are consummate readers and are in fact the most recent recipients of the literacy award from hands across the seas and in 2015 and you heard it from the chief herself the school was awarded for its zeal for reading as well as for its well equipped library you could not have selected a better school Representative for the Sandals Foundation, Heidi Clark, noted that although the Sandals Foundation does not operate in Dominica, they are very happy to come on board after receiving the news of Tropical Storm Erica. The project we hand over today is valued at over US $32,000. For us, it's not really about the money value. For us, it's about the children. And it's about the children their education and securing their future. We are also excited to announce that this will not be our final project here because we have partnered with Hands Across the Sea, a longtime partner of ours from St. Lucia, Antigua and Grenada, and we are looking at another library to assist at the Newtown School. The Sounds Foundation has worked with over 98 schools across the region. The idea to build up infrastructure, to train teachers, to bring in supplies, and to bring updated technology to our schools. We want to give the children of the Caribbean the same opportunities that children have across the world to reach their full potential. Clark advised the staff and students to use this gift to reach their full potential and to always ensure that the library remains functional. The Petit Savan Primary School has been housed at the Old Teachers College in Bath Estate since the passage of Tropical Storm Erica. The ex-expedition mission of 14 all-women team from across the world continues to educate the world's population about the ill effects of plastics and toxins in the Caribbean Sea. The team took its message to Dominica during its March 7th to 9th visit. The group of women engaged the general public, schools and government officials in discussions about their findings on the challenges of overcoming pollution, particularly in small islands like Dominica. On Wednesday, the team gathered at the Portsmouth Market to talk to students and the general public about their mission. Coordinator of Ex-Expedition Caribbean, Jennifer Pitt, explained the significance of the mission. Basically, what we know now is that plastics make their way out into the ocean and they break down smaller and smaller over time. So they don't disappear, but they also act as sponges for toxics. And so when Emily and Lucy met, they started to talk about the fact that these plastics and toxics were making their way back up the food chain to us as humans because we eat the fish that ingest the plastics in the ocean. And they started asking the questions, what are the effects of these plastics and chemicals making their way back to us? And that's how 
Arawak's expedition started. She notes that this first voyage was focused on raising awareness. We started doing these big voyages across the ocean, trying to understand what was out there. And every time we would arrive back from these trips, we'd realize that all of the solutions to ocean plastic and these chemicals start on land. And that's why we came up with X-Expedition Caribbean. It's the first one where we're really concentrating fully on outreach and talking to communities about some of the solutions they already have in place, but also the challenges that they face. The mission coordinator hopes that the expedition will sensitize persons about proper management and disposal of waste in Dominica's waters. Plastic is an amazing material. It was designed to last. What it wasn't made for is being used once and then thrown away. So things like grocery bags, that we go to the grocery store, we pick up our groceries, we throw that bag in the garbage. That bag is making its way out into the ocean and causing a part of this problem. The same with plastic water bottles, straws that you get in drinks at restaurants and cafes. So if people can stop using these single-use plastics and find alternatives like fabric bags, stainless steel water bottles, not using a straw, it's a great place to start. Before we leave, here are a few announcements. The Youth Development Division invites applications from suitably qualified persons to fill the following positions. Computer Skills Instructor for Portsmouth, Computer Maintenance Instructor for Portsmouth, Computer Maintenance Instructor for St. Joseph, Landscaping Instructor for Dublin, and Boat Making Instructor for Castle Bruce. Successful applicants will be contracted for no less than three months in the first instance and will be required to begin employment in April 2016. Applicants should be knowledgeable in the skill area and possess a certificate and or at least three years of experience. Interested persons should apply to the Permanent Secretary Ministry of Youth, Sports, Culture and Constituency Empowerment. Deadline for receipt of application is Friday, March 11, 2016. Persons with companies incorporated under Companies Act 21 of 1994 and business names registered under the Registration of Business Names Act, Chapter 7846, are hereby informed of the requirements under the Acts to file annual returns and pay annual fees before the 2nd of April each year. Companies are required to file financial statement of certificate of solvency. If you have not done so, please visit the Companies and Intellectual Property Office at 12 Turkey Lane, Roseau, to have your company of business name brought to good standing. Failure to comply may result in steps being taken to have the company struck off the register of companies. Please be guided accordingly. The Local Area Management Authority of the Sufre Scotshead Marine Reserve, together with Sufre Scotshead Village Council and the Improvement Committee, have planned a major cleanup campaign in the twin communities of Sufre and Scotshead for Sunday, March 13, 2016, commencing at 9 a.m. The goal of the campaign is to relieve the pressure of benthic communities within the Sufre and Scotshead Marine Reserve, improve the overall aesthetics of the community, enhance the tourism potentials of the Sufre and Scotshead Marine Reserve, minimize the risk of occurrence of mosquito-related diseases, particularly Zika. The public is invited to turn out in large numbers to support this effort. In the meantime, if anyone requires additional information, please do not hesitate to contact either Dr. Camille David or Heston Charles at telephone number 617-7084 or 616-4229 respectively. Coming up next, your tip of the day. These days in our world of instant gratification, it's more important than ever to be able to stay focused on saving money any way you can. So to help you monitor your spending habits and cut expenses, here is one easy way you can save every day. Starting right now. Make a weekly money date. Commit to sitting down with your money once a week for a money date. During this time, update your budget, review your accounts, and track your progress against your financial goals. Like any relationship, if you want your financial life to improve, you must spend time with your money. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm 
or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash GIS News Dominica and follow us on Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News Desk, I'm Kimani Senja. Thank you for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.